button below to start my video. Which button is that? Let's see. Oh, here it is. Alright, you see me? Yeah, there you are, in all your glory. That's me. Okay, cool. So, first off, let me introduce you to our participants. We have, we the ninja is missing. You met the gambling ninja, didn't you? I did meet the gambling ninja. Yeah. Okay, so, first off, Bill DeWeese is right here. Hey, Lee, how you doing? Hey, Bill. Bill is a voiceover artist, uh, makes uh, over $130,000 a year out of his home studio. Outside yeah, Bill and I uh, chatted on the phone that one day. That's right. Yeah. Good. Uh, now we have Andrew Heimers. Andrew is power Andrew. power after divorce, showing men. I could have used him as soon after you first met me uh, with the uh, with number four, as we affectionately call her. <laughs> and, <laughs> now over here is Joanna Falk. Joanna is she teaches educators. She teaches educators how to teach better. Okay. Oh, very nice. And Michael Potter, and Michael is involved in, uh, sh he's a, a lawyer uh, who was uh, a military guy and is now uh, doing asset protection stuff. Got it. Okay, cool. So what I told them that this session was all about is that if you're going to be in, this, in the field of information marketing, you are going to end up uh, selling your products through a lot of different means, one of which is when you get up in front of a group of people to speak. So part A is, you know, how do you, how do you connect better with your audience, et cetera, et cetera. Part B is having to do with improv, which is we've been doing a lot of videos here and they're going to end up doing a lot of audio programs and everything else. So why is improv an important tool to make you feel more comfortable so that when you do your videos and you do your audios, you come off as more real and more authentic? Okay. Uh, so you want me to, uh, Tackle that giant question? Yeah. I want you to tackle each of those giant questions in under 23 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, well, I'll start with the improv one. So one of the main reasons I think improv is such an important tool is because, um, you know, our life and our normal conversations are improvised. We don't go off of a script. And so when you're getting up there and speaking to a group, whether it's in a full thousand person audience or just you know five people who are coming to see you speak uh you know around a table that uh your ability to be national authentic like you talk about that connection thing is how you connect with your audience and if you're relying on a script then that instantly makes you wooden and one thing i like to say is one of the reasons why uh, broadway actors get paid so well is because they're able to recite a script um so naturally that it doesn't look like it's scripted. But in order to do that, they have years of training and year, uh, weeks and months of practice and rehearsal. For us as speakers, um, especially if you're not making your primary vocation, then, you know, if you're doing more, you have another career and you do some info marketing and then you're going to get up to speak, your best bet is to learn uh, how to be natural, how to just improvise, how to be yourself no matter what the scenario is. And that's one of the big things we do when we teach people how to use improv to be speakers. So, uh, how was that? <laughs> I don't know. What, what's in the cup? Is there vodka? What's going on? Not yet. We'll see how the rest of this call goes. <laughs> so, um, and, and maybe then we, let's say that we all agree that then, yes, improv is an important component of what we and the folks here need to do. My next question then would be, give us a few little tips so that we can get better at doing this and what are some additional resources? Okay, uh, tips to get better at doing improv? Well, tips to get better at doing interviews, doing videos, et cetera, et cetera, as a information marketer. Okay, well, um, one of the things obviously with anything is to practice, but uh, so just generate lots of content, whether it's videos or by writing. One of the reasons I like improv also is at its core, improv is about creativity. And uh, as an info marketer and a, and a content generator, which is really what we do as info marketers, um, you know, our ability to write blog posts, create video, generate products uh, is, you know, that's all about being able to be creative. And so with improv and 
you know, Fred, I know I was talking with you about kind of working on this novel thing, and it was really helpful, all the stuff we've done with improv, because I found there's so many days you sit down to create some content, whether it's fiction or a blog post or a video, and you're not sure what to do. When you've got your creative creativity tapped, um, like we do in improv, you learn to just start writing or start generating, keep going. So that, I think, is both a benefit of learning improv and a way of practicing it, which is to just generate lots and lots of content and don't edit yourself. And the more you comfortable you get with doing that, the better you'll become at it. And that'll help your ability to be natural and to improvise. So uh, that's definitely one of my favorites, and I do it every day. And, uh, you know, it could be on your topic. It could be on something random. Just uh, it could be journaling, like, you know, the Julia Cameron uh, – morning pages give give them that more on that they may not know that uh, that resource okay well julia cameron's a writer and she's written a bunch of books on being creative and her fundamental tool is this thing called morning pages where every day first thing in the morning before your head is filled with thoughts of other things you sit down with three blank sheets of paper and then longhand write out your thoughts on those pages now what you write doesn't matter it can be anything at all but the key is that you never let the pen stop moving and you keep writing until three pages are filled. And what's interesting is the first couple of pages will be very whatever, basic stuff. Even I've even written stuff like I don't really want to do this. But as you get to the second half into that third page, uh, ideas really start to flow out of you, clear past the gunk. And all your creativity starts to flow, which is really useful because a lot of the reasons we're not as creative, one of the things we do in the when we teach the improv it's how to get past all that gunk because we spent so many years of our lives just kind of suppressing our creativity because it's not politically correct. So morning pages and improv are both great tools to tap back into that creativity. Now, morning pages, of course, not to be confused with morning sickness, right? Uh, they're a little bit different, yes. I don't think you'd want to be sick for three straight pages. <laughs> so, so again, um, and another thing that what I was telling them about, and I think I showed them the book, Stephen King's On Writing, if you're talking about from the writing standpoint, would be a good resource. Yeah, that's phenomenal. It's obviously geared towards someone writing a novel, but I think it's useful uh, just for anyone who wants to write because he talks about the tools of good writing and the process. And, uh, and tying back to improv, one of the things that grabbed me about King's book is the way he describes his writing process is essentially uh, how we as improvisers create improvised content. He just starts, he doesn't plot. He just starts with an idea and starts writing and sees where the story takes him, which is really a cool way to go. Yeah, now... Uh, so in or, in terms of the 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 person who's sitting in in an information products boot camp like this mm -hmm. is concerned about you know the the different modalities. They're concerned about uh, written content. They're concerned about audio content. They're concerned about video content. They're concerned about doing uh, things up in front of a group in a seminar environment. And so improv will naturally fit with doing all of these, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, from the writing side, you're, you're both your creativity and your creative voice. Uh, the audio side, uh, and not all improv instructors really focus on this because they caught up on a lot of other things, but just your ability to, to control your voice, control your volume, and use your voice as a tool. Uh, I think too often people forget about that. They worry so much about the words. They forget about how just using a little emotion and putting weight on certain words and having a good, clear voice. I mean, if you're the expert and you sound like you're not confident or like you don't know what you're talking about, people aren't going to want to invest in your products. It doesn't matter how many people are in the audience. So that, whether it's you in front of an audience or in an audio product, that vocal control is helpful from improv. And obviously, um, in front of a room, I don't think anything's going to help you connect with the audience as much as that ability to be natural, be in the moment, to play with the audience when you need to. I think obviously it helps in all of those modalities. Good. Okay, so then I think that what I also wanted you to talk about is um, now have we set we, we do we have I forget do we have dates for our thing that we're doing or not? Yeah, that's uh, Thursday, March third through Sunday, March sixth. Okay, so March third through March sixth, and that thing is called the Speaking School. Yes, thespeakingschool dot com. So somebody who's you know, and so what I'm mainly thinking about is other people who are you know, who are watching this program, who aren't at the boot camp as well. It's something that they want to consider. And so that's a program where we show people uh, using improv techniques how to become better speakers, correct? Yeah, improv is the primary tool we use to, to teach speaking skills. Um, 
But similar to your boot camp, since it's a small group of people, it gets very customized. So we've had groups before who really were just, they wanted to use the improv and learn the creativity. So we focused on that. Uh, another group, they really were more towards a professional speaking side. So they really wanted to use the improv to craft their particular messages. So it's a tool that runs throughout, but it gets customized to what that particular group or individual needs. It's And it's great because it's just so immersive. I mean, I've seen, and you've seen it too, people who just in a few days from what they walk in to walk out when you are just doing improv and speaking skills for like six hours a day. It's amazing. It, it really is. The transformation. I mean, uh, give them the one example of Srikanth, the, uh, the guy came all the way over from India to this program uh, a year and a half or so ago. Yeah, this was crazy. He came in from India, and this was the most timid, reluctant person I've ever seen do anything. Um, you know, we got up to do what I consider to be one of the most basic, simple exercises, and he just froze and he looked around. And he was like embarrassed to say anything, and uh, you know, but we kept working on him, and he kept getting me the exercise. And by like not even the last day, but like halfway through the program, we had people prepare speeches, and this dude comes out and he like starts his speech. By singing uh, <laughs> Crazy by Narls Barkley. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just, I mean, he was really one of the most amazing transformations. I mean, the word transformation gets tossed around a lot in motivational speaking and coaching, but holy cow, I mean, he was really a different person. Um, and by the end, I mean, you saw it, he was doing like little motivational speeches and he was, he was just so much more comfortable. And it's just, you know, a lot of it is getting people out of that shell, especially for someone like him. Once we got him past that, he was just transformed. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, it, it really, really was something. So that's that's a resource. Now, are there any other books that you would recommend that people read in order to get better at this stuff? What are some other additional resources that they could get a hold of? Well, uh, additional resources, I mean, if I start with uh, some of the stuff we've done, just because, you know, I want to. Um, we always have a DVD on this topic called Improper Speakers. Uh, which is taking, it's a series of exercises that apply to speaking, and specifically using, another thing we have is an audio, specifically for using uh, improv and these kind of principles to be funnier, is Unleashing Your Inner Comedian, which is just a one-hour audio. Um, beyond that, book-wise, there's, uh, I'm trying to think what, I mean, well, if you want straight improv comedy, my favorite book is Impro for Storytellers by Keith Johnstone. Yeah, um, Impro, uh, I-M-P-R-O, for storytelling. Yeah, no V. Yeah. yeah, now that is, it's a pretty hefty book, but it's an easy read, but it's also a very straight improv comedy performance based, so it may not be, unless you're looking at doing comedy, it may not be the best resource, but I think it's a good read. Yeah. Um, what about, the Twyla, website, Tharp, what about the Twyla Tharp book you gave me for my birthday one time? Oh, yeah, yeah, if you're talking creativity, uh, Twyla Tharp's The Creative Habit. And uh, Julia Cameron's The Artist Way are excellent. And you had mentioned on writing. Yes. And and I think you've also recommended, which I love, is uh, The War of Art, which I think is just a good, a good book, a good. Whoops. We lost you. We lost your audio. Yeah, nope. There you go. Now you're back. You got me? Yeah, now you're back. For a while, it, it, is, okay. it, it was as if you'd been censored by the FTC. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, that's gonna happen soon enough. So, but yeah, so uh, the Julie Cameron on the artist, the artist way, and uh, Twilight Tharp's Creative Habit, and um, Stephen Pressfield's uh, War of Art, I think, is another good one for right. The War of Art, not the Art of War by Sun Tzu. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. So good. So now um, a few other things here. Now you and I are uh, joint venture partners in a venture called SpeakingExpert.com. So why don't you, and again, Avish, uh, similar to Andrew, by the way, Andrew's an engineer. Um, you have a background in engineering, went to uh, UPenn, you know, he's, you know, Ivy League kind of guy. Oh, yeah. It's amazing he's uh, hanging out with the likes of me, a public school guy. Um, I know, they revoked my degree for that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell people a little bit about uh, what we're doing there and, and, and some of our philosophy <clears throat> and what's going on there, and uh, how it might be able to be helpful to them. Sure. Well, uh, speaking expert is uh, the latest uh, thing Fred and I do. So it starts with a, a blog, and it's really the point of the site is to help people uh, be better speakers from the platform, 
and also show them how to uh, monetize their speaking. So it's really a kind of a holistic, be a better speaker, make money as a speaker, and frankly, have more fun as a speaker because uh, Fred and I are both ludicrous individuals. And so when it comes to kind of having a blog and putting it out there, we're like, we want to do this because it's fun and so much content out there is so dry and serious. So it's really three factors. And the point is to uh, build the blog itself up with content and some SEO and some video uh, blogging as well. And then they have a series of products, which uh, we have some, some of the things Fred and I have created together and some of them are the business side ones that Fred's done himself. So those are all on the site. And obviously the end game for this is to feed people into that speaking school and maybe also some one-on-one -on -one type stuff. So um, it's just generating a lot of content around anything to help people be better and more successful speakers. Good. Okay, now let's open it up to the group if they have any questions. Does anybody have any questions for Avish? Question? Yes, Andrew, come on over oh, here if you would. Don't, sorry, sure. just so I don't have to move this around. Okay, so Andrew's got a question for you. Hey there, uh, Avish. Yes, um, I'm curious. Hey, Andrew. I took uh, typing in, in high school, right? And uh, I thought it was kind of cool. Recently, I found a typing tool. I could just download the software and learn how to type. Is there some kind of interactive program you have or you know of that I can use to practice improv on the on the computer? Uh, you know, it's funny you mention that. I, I don't, but I've been thinking about writing one or having one written like a, like a Facebook app or a Flash app or something. So offhand, I don't know of any, which I guess would be a good reason to go build one. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it would be nice to have that. Um, cool to do. Like an improv trainer type app. Yeah, but it's automated, right? Automated kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, that'd be tough because you need a, a lot of artificial intelligence because usually with improv you need at least two people interacting. Yeah, I've thought about that. So it had to be very specific. It'd be mostly on the creativity side, less on the collaborative side. So uh, other questions for Avish as it relates to this topic? Yes, hey, Bill. Hey, Avish, this is Bill. Um, Hey, Bill. Can you talk a little bit more to the to the process of, of creating content? Let's say I'm sitting down and I know I need to create a, a a blog, and I just I'm you know I'm dry, don't don't know what to talk about. What would be your process of trying to to figure out what to come up with for that day? Anything that triggers ideas, thoughts? Yeah, well, my first thing is go sit on the couch and watch TV, but that never really works well. <laughs> so um, I uh, you know what's funny is I've been obsessed lately with this concept of flow by. Uh, Michael, Michael, Michael Zizis Rivers. Yeah, it's like Manali Sedizium. He's got his last name has like 15 characters, 12 of which are consonants. But, um, you know, with the, with the, once you get into the flow state, the whole thing is that, uh, I mean, to be redundant, ideas just flow out of you. You're in the zone. Time kind of just passes. But the key to get into that state is you have to stay at a task for more than 15 minutes. So I'm constantly reminding myself of that, even using a stopwatch to prevent myself from stopping early. And a lot of it is just giving myself permission to write crap. Right. And realizing that even if what I, I hate what I'm writing, that if I just keep writing, I'll get in that flow state and many better ideas will come. So I mean, some of the best stuff I've written is after I have to throw away the first half hour of writing. So obviously we love the, we love the days where you can just sit down and start generating content, but so one is I would just start, and that's where that creative uh, Julia Cameron stuff comes in handy because uh, you train yourself to just write without necessarily worrying about the outline of the content. Now, Avish, um, Avish let me interrupt you a second. Remember yeah. when I was I was going on a tear and I was doing like four to five blog posts a day? Yeah. Now, what happened was that even though that was a lot of content, for some reason, the more I did, the easier it was to come up with more content. So. Hmm. When, when I have scaled back and I'm doing less now, it's actually tougher to come up with one every two or three days than it was to be when I was doing three or three to five a day. So I, I, now the thing is you should know about Andrew. Andrew has written literally much more than half a million words on the topic of men after they get divorced, getting back their power. Oh. So what I suggested to him, and here's his end game. His end game is to coach men either individually or as groups but generally individually on how to get back that power and to really come back after being divorced so what I suggested to him is he take a look at all of his material and he release it onto his blog piecemeal one day at a time so he doesn't overwhelm the search engines check on his titles and, and then the release it so he's already got a huge storehouse of information that can be released because his end game is specifically to get so he might have a button on his site that says click here to talk to Andrew live and get some help 
So, but everything else on his blog is all about just proving that he's the knowledgeable expert on this topic. Any thoughts on that? Uh, no, I mean, I think that's brilliant. I mean, I'm all about repurposing content. So where has that half million words been written? It's, it's sitting on his hard drive. I hope it's backed has up. Has it not been put out to the world anywhere? No, it's not out to the world yet. Oh, yeah, then, I mean, that's... That's at least a thousand blog posts right there, or uh, five hundred blog posts right there. Yep. If not more, because you know, I'm, I'm, that's a pretty large word count. So. Yeah. So what he was thinking of doing is some of his articles are anywhere from six hundred to twelve hundred words, and some of them are three thousand words. And I say, you know, I don't think it really matters if you just start dripping those out one a day. And and what first thing he's got to do is put them into order. And once they're in order, then you know, in some kind of semblance of order, so that they're in categories. So when you do their blogging. You can put them in the various categories so people can do that. Um, anyway, so I just thought I'd share that with you because he's got that right now already done. So now when he starts releasing that, but he's constantly writing and updating stuff. Uh, anybody, uh, other questions for Avish? I don't want to, If yes, Andrew's got another one. Go ahead, shoot. Yeah. Uh, Avish, it's Andrew again. I'm wondering if, um, if I could hire you individually. Is that possible to just coach me directly or how would that go? Yeah, so do you do individual coaching and on what? Uh, I do. It depends on what topic you want. I actually have a section on that on my website. Um, and if you're looking specifically for improv and uh, speaking type stuff, and that's something Fred and I also do. So um, so it depends kind of what exactly you're looking for. We can definitely talk. Um, give, up, yeah, give, them, give everybody your contact information, including people who are watching this video offline or after, uh, not, not live, I should say. All right, well, the best way to, uh, to contact me and find out about me is to go to my website, which is motivationalsmartass.com which is where I have my blog, my speaking videos, information about uh, how to contact me and hire me as well. So there you have it, motivationalsmartass.com. Any other questions for Vish? Looks like we're letting you off early. Get back to your vodka. We'll see you soon. Uh, thank you very much, Brett. You got it. Bye. See ya, buddy. Bye.